engine cooling design is a huge subject that's impossible to cover in just a short video but there's one area of confusion to clear up before we move on what's the difference between a header tank and an expansion tank many people ask us for a header tank when what they really need is an expansion tank and vice versa uh, and they really are two very different components the big difference between these two components is a header tank is pressurized it's part of the cooling system and it runs at the same water pressure as the rest of the system the expansion tank is not pressurized it works at atmospheric pressure and although it is part of the cooling system it's outside of the pressurized part the header tank must be at the highest point of the cooling system its main function is to always ensure that there's adequate water to flow around the cooling system. Its other function is to collect air from all the high points in the system and bleed them back to the tank. On this header tank there are three hose connections. The big one at the bottom here, 15 millimeters. This is the one that feeds the cooling system and makes sure it's always got water. This one goes down to a T-piece, which is connected into your bottom hose just before the water pump. This 6mm hose tail here has got a piece of hose on it, which would go, for instance, to the top of your radiator to collect air from the top of the radiator and bleed it back into the tank. And this one, which is between the two seals of the radiator cap, this is the one that goes to the expansion tank. So why do you need a header tank in an engine cooling system? Well, all engines will expand and contract as they get hot and cold. And the water that's displaced in this expansion and contraction has got to go somewhere. So a header tank collects the expanded water as the engine gets hot. And as the engine cools down, it'll take it back into the engine so you've always got the optimum amount of coolant in your engine. Not all engines expand and contract very much so um, on, a, on a smaller maybe a bike engine you may get away with just um, a radiator cap in your top hose um, going off to uh, an overflow or an expansion tank. So where does the expansion tank come in and do you always need one? Well, not necessarily. You could try and experiment when you've built your car. Uh, try and fill up the header tank just half full. And if the water expands just another inch or two up the header tank, that's fine. That's probably all you need. But if you've got a lot of expansion in a larger engine, then the expansion tank could be the answer. But to understand how an expansion tank works, we first got to understand how a radiator cap works. This is a standard 13 pound radiator cap and there's two rubber seals on here, a specific distance apart. And the matching neck on the header tank also has two sealing surfaces the same distance apart. And this hose outlet is located between the two seals in the neck. Now located between these two seals on the cap is a spring uh, and this spring is set to 13 pound pressure of your cooling system so if your cooling system pressure comes up beyond 13 pound pressure this seal is pushed away against the spring allowing the fluid to go past the seal into the neck and out of that aluminium hose union. And that hose union is connected via a piece of 8mm rubber pipe to the expansion tank lid. Here it is. Now this lid has a tiny hole in it to vent the expansion tank, making the pressure the same as everything else outside the car system. But there's a pipe linking the lid and the hose that goes right down to the bottom 
of the expansion tank. And you should always have just enough water in the bottom of the expansion tank, maybe an inch, to cover the bottom of the hose. So we run our engine, the coolant gets hot, the engine gets hot, and the coolant expands. It expands beyond 13 pounds pressure, which is the pressure of the cooling system, and it blows past the first seal in the radiator cap. Through the overflow pipe, into the expansion tank, and adds water to the expansion tank, maybe up to three quarters full. When the engine cools, the water from the expansion tank is drawn back through the pipe, back through the filler neck, back through the radiator cap, and back into the header tank. So how does that work? Here's the clever part of a radiator cap design. This little brass cap on the end of the first seal is actually a sprung-loaded valve. And as it sits, naturally, it seals against the bottom seal of the cap under pressure. And as we've said before, the water will compress the first seal and escape past into the expansion tank. But as the engine cools, it tries to create a vacuum inside the engine, trying to draw the water back in. And this little sprung valve will open, allowing the water from the expansion tank to come back into the engine. Clever stuff. Header tanks come in all shapes and sizes, but they all do pretty much the same job. This one's a base mounted horizontal tank, which you can sit, for instance, on top of a pedal box or a footwell. This is the same type of horizontal tank, but this one has a, a rear mount, so you can mount it on a bulkhead. And here's a vertical one. This also has a rear mount that you can mount on a bulkhead. But they've all got the same inlets and outlets.